committee chairperson. Uh, let's go around the room and do a quick roll, starting with Joe down there. Joe Eichstead, city engineer. Nick, <clears throat> Nick Dooms, assistant city engineer. Paul Voller, public works superintendent. Sherry Evanson, District 5. Dennis Pollock, member of the committee. Jay Bemke, District 8. Tom Rome, District 4, Alderman. Did I say District 4? Stick to District. Sorry. All right, we'll call this meeting to order. It is 5 p.m. Item 2, review the Engineering and Street Department monthly activity report. Paul, you want to kick us off? Sure, thank you. Um, our monthly report is attached to the agenda. Uh, just some highlights. Uh, obviously, when you get rain in, in uh, February, you got to go out and do a lot of uh, cold patching, so we've been spending a fair amount of time on that. Uh, also, with the slow time, um, we've been training uh, employees on different pieces of equipment that don't normally get into them so that uh, when we get big snow events like we had over the last couple weeks, uh, we have enough staff to be able to run run the equipment as needed. Um, again, we've, we've had multiple rain slash ice slash snow events um, over the last month, so we were dealing with that. One, one snow event was obviously significant enough to require us to pull out snow in the downtown area. Um, we also winged back snow in, in areas where there was blowing and things like that. Uh, we also, over the last month, have completed our confined space and forklift training for staff that's required. Um, tomorrow we'll be completing our um, annual OSHA 10 training. Um, we've been pushing that around for the last two weeks due to different snow and things like that that has happened when we were had it scheduled. Um, Kafka, Constru Kafka Construction has completed the grinding at the east side and west side compost sites as well as the um, proposed dog park over off of Saratoga Street. Um, when the temperatures have arisen, uh, we took that opportunity to try to remove some of the ice pack off of the residential streets um, so that there wouldn't be extreme rutting and things like that. For the most part, all of our streets are, are down back to pavement now. Um, we also, there was that week and a half time period there where um, we had some 40 degree temperature, so we fired up both of our street sweepers and went and removed the loose chips off of the uh, seal coated streets that we did last year so that there's less cleanup to do in the spring. Our sign shop, we are we only have one full-time staff member down there right now due to transfer out. Um, so he's been working on replacing our 30 inch stop signs that no longer meet the reflectivity requirement of the MUTCD. Um, as well as speed limits and yield signs that don't meet those requirements as well. Uh, last weekend we had uh, the state gymnastics meet in town and so uh, the, um, they request us to put up the welcome WIA fans on the, on the state highway so that was completed. Uh, we'll also be switching over our winter um, banners to Think Spring banners. Um, and that was supposed to take place last week, but because of the weather, it did not get done. Our shop has been um, busy making sure that our fleet is ready for um, the snow events that we've had, and then obviously we get to fix some things if we break stuff during the snow, snow event. Uh, we also had a, um, the packer on one of the garbage trucks had to be replaced um, due to significant rust and things like that as well as repairing the hydraulic cylinder in there. Uh, we took delivery of a engineering pickup and uh, a truck for the parks department, so we had to get the various uh, radios and stickers and things like that put on those vehicles to get them ready for use. Um, and then we also had to replace a uh, transfer case in one of the squads for the police department. And that completes the highlights for the month of February for the Public Works Department. Any questions for Paul? All right, Joe, you want to take us to engineering? Certainly, thank you. So for the engineering department for the month of February, uh, some of the highlights uh, that I'll point out uh, under traffic, um, 
we've been doing a variety of uh, traffic studies in the vicinity of 13th Street North, Saratoga Street. Um, all of those uh, intersections have been reviewed. Um, all, of, all of the initial review and data confirms that those, all the intersections except 14th Street North and Avon Street are sufficient at uncontrolled uh, traffic control. And um, due to a series of accidents at 14th Street and Avon Street, we're continuing to look at that a bit further. Um, that may justify increasing uh, traffic control, at least to a yield uh, situation, but um, uh, perhaps next month we'll have that, that one uh, completed. Uh, additionally, we did a traffic study at Woodside School along Two Mile Avenue and, and Grove Avenue. Um, there was, there's been some concerns with queuing traffic on Two Mile Avenue extending out onto A Street South, and so we observed uh, the traffic situation there uh, when school started in the morning and then as well in the afternoon when school let out. And then based on those observations, we've kind of put together some recommendations that um, we'll be sharing with the, with the schools as well as the, the police department. Um, additionally, um, all of our 2023 reconstruction project plans are, are complete at this point. Uh, we did get those out to uh, utility companies and on March 1st, we, we held a, a pre-construction meeting uh, to review those projects with them and look at our schedules and any conflicts uh, that any of those utility companies had. Um, there's a few adjustments that we're making to the plan sets based on that, but um, otherwise they are complete. In addition, we sent letters out to Oak Street property owners uh, in February, uh, notifying them of, uh, of the project start for this year. And additional letters will be sent out for the other projects um, probably early, early to middle of this, this month. Additionally, uh, stormwater utility, uh, we've been going through an auditing process to review all of the accounts and make sure that our charges are, are accurate, that we're not overbilling or, or underbilling. And um, that, is, that audit is, is essentially complete. We're, we're in the implementation stage with water and light. Um, so that kind of really kicked off here this week. And um, uh, water and light hopes to implement those charges into their billing cycle uh, within the next uh, two to four weeks. Uh, regarding the One Mile Creek project, all of the easements for that project are, are secured at this point. Um, we're still working through uh, the two permits uh, that are needed for, for that project. Um, we've been communicating with the DR, DNR on those and uh, exchanging information back and forth as needed. Um, Additionally, we, um, we accepted or did a bid opening for the dog park fence on Monday of this week. And um, so those are, those are in and, and probably be referred to uh, property and finance here in the future. But I guess that concludes the engineering monthly report. Thanks, Joe. Any comments, questions on the engineering report? All right, we'll move on. Item three, review the 2023 asphalt paving contract bid results and consider awarding the contract to the low qualified bidder. Joe? So I'll, I'll quick cover that. Um, so we just uh, opened bids for our yearly asphalt paving contract uh, for paving all our um, streets associated with our city projects. Um, we had uh, an engineer's estimate of approximately $434,000 for this work. Um, we had a, a bid from American Asphalt that was um, below that at uh, $410,960.30. $410, um, we found them to be the low qualified bidder. And so we are... Um, recommending approval um, to award the contract to American Asphalt uh, for the uh, 2023 asphalt paving contract uh, in the amount of $410,960.30. Thanks, Nick. 
questions, comments? Go ahead, Jay. So is this just for your construction projects, or do we have anything that, since we have the transportation utility now, are we going to do anything extra, or how are you going to approach that, I guess? Yeah. So it is um, primarily for the reconstruction projects. However, there's uh, a couple alleys uh, to be paved and also um, some pavement replacement, I believe, on 32nd Street. So there's, there's a f few other items related to... Um, like a, a mill and overlay or pavement replacement type of program. What are our committee's wishes? I'll make a motion to approve. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to vote. All in favor, respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. All right, item four, review the 2023 concrete contract for reconstruction projects and consider awarding the contract to the low qualified bidder. Nick? So again, we uh, open uh, bids for this concrete contract as well. Um, again, for our reconstruction projects for this year. Um, so we estimated um, approximately $607,000. Uh, we did get two bids in, uh, one from SD Ellen Becker and one from Summers Construction. Um, Ellen Becker was the apparent low bidder uh, with a bid of $561,462 even. Um, and we have found them to be the, um, the low qualified bidder. Um, and so again, we are recommending um, approval to SD Ellen Becker um, for the 2023 concrete contract for reconstruction projects here in, in the city uh, in the amount of $561,462 even. Thanks, Nick. Any questions or comments? Sherry. Thank you. Have we used this vendor before? I mean, we're satisfied with their work. I just, it's quite a quite a difference in pricing so it's like is sure is, is the quality of the work the same thank you yeah no we we did work with them last year and um i'm sure before that as well um so yeah no um from what i understand uh good contractor um have had good results with them um so yeah it it's um they're definitely a qualified bidder thank you I'll make a motion to approve. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, SD Ellen Becker as the low qualified bidder. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to vote. All in favor, respond with aye. 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 Opposed, the same. Ayes have it. Okay, item five, review the 2023 crushing contract and consider awarding the contract to the low qualified bidder. Nick? So this was our last uh, uh, set of bids that we opened up uh, for this year's crushing, crushing contract. Uh, we did get seven bids. Um, <clears throat> the, the low bidder, uh, the apparent low bidder was PGA Incorporated, uh, who we worked with uh, last year um, as well. And uh, they had a low bid of $106,300, uh, which was below our estimate of $126,000. Uh, so again, we found them to be the low uh, responsible bidder, and um, we are recommending them to be approved uh, uh, for awarding the contract for our, our crushing contract for this year. Thanks, Nick. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, I'll make a motion to approve uh, PGA Incorporated as the low qualified bidder for the crushing contract. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to vote. All in favor, respond with aye. 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 Opposed the same. Ayes have it. 
Item six, review the and consider installing sidewalk on the east side of 16th Street South between East Riverview Expressway and 1,075 feet south. Joe? So I can give a little bit of background um, on the item initially and then um, you know it, it came came to me from uh, Alderperson Bemke. Um, so currently there's, there's no sidewalk on the, the east side of 16th Street from from the expressway um, basically to the south entrance of the the main parking lot at uh, at the front entrance of Lincoln High School and um, from my understanding there have been discussions with uh, the Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools and the city over the past couple of years uh, about the sidewalk installation and in fact um, the school district had hopes of incorporating um, this this sidewalk insulation or, or some aspect of it and with uh, recent upgrades uh, that they've had at the school um, however you know as things worked out it, it didn't uh, that project didn't pan out um, but nevertheless um, there are two options that we reviewed uh, under I guess for consideration this evening and one is uh, just as just our standard five foot concrete sidewalk uh, we also looked at uh, a, a wider path um, asphalt rather than concrete uh, primarily because of the connection with the expressway and then the potential potential and future connection with the other uses further to the south along 16th street with the quadplex and the hockey rink and the football field and um, that there might be some additional value there having a wider a wider path um, the asphalt path is estimated to cost forty thousand dollars whereas the concrete sidewalk is estimated to be seventy thousand um, so um, I guess the options that are available you know we could consider adding this this project into the capital improvement plan um, of course there's always the the do nothing option um, but I do I do find benefit I think uh, everybody I've spoken to um, does find value there I mean it is right in front of the school um, regarding financing for the project there there was some question about if the since it's new sidewalk would it would special assessment still apply in this particular instance or would the transportation utility uh, be funding a project such as this and um, I did did review that in detail I did talk with Sue Schill about it as well we reviewed the ordinances um, in light of the, the transportation utility and um, everything that we we've, we've reviewed is that for new installations it would still be a special assessment scenario if the city uh, were to do the project on behalf of the uh, adjacent property owner um, in addition uh, you know working with the school district rather than special assessments school district you could, you could either just pay the city directly for it otherwise you know, it could be a project that the school district could still pursue uh, on their own if if they chose to do so but otherwise that that concludes some of the the background information on the referral Thank you, Joe. Go ahead, Dennis. Uh, thank you. Uh, does the city ordinance uh, allow uh, anything but cement for a sidewalk? Can they go with the blacktop? Yeah, it's it's. Um, I don't I don't think it would be. Um, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary, I guess. Um, it would still satisfy as a sidewalk, um, and certainly it'd be. Financially, it would be um, favorable, I guess. But the uh, the main reason is that it's it's a it's a wider path. It's more accessible for the number of pedestrians, and and if there are bicyclists that use it, it's it's just it's more usable for the for those uh, pedestrians and bicyclists. Well, I, I understand that, but the average uh, citizen, if if they wanted to put a sidewalk in. They would have to put cement in, though, would they not? They would, yes. Oh. Yep. Okay, thank you. 
I see Ed back there. Are you interested in commenting on this? Come on up to the mic, please. State your name and address. Thanks. Let's make sure the green button is on. Any questions for Ed while he's up here? This the statement in here that WRPS had incorporated sidewalk installation into recent upgrade was not able to do so. Was that just simply funding or no. okay? Thanks, Ed. So would there be some cost sharing potentially involved in this project with the school district? All right, uh, I did receive an email from a resident, uh, Eric Davin. Um, I'll just go through it here. Uh, I am emailing in regards to item six, sidewalk on 16th Street South for tonight's Public Works Committee meeting. I am unable to attend the meeting, but wanted to express our support to have some type of sidewalk or walkway in this location. The area is heavily traveled by pedestrians. It would be a great addition to connect the bike path in the area along the increase along with increased safety around the school and the recent updates and addition um, of the baseball fields. Currently, if anyone is traveling along the east side of 16th Street northbound, they have to either cross the road at Pepper, Midblock, or walk in the parking lot of Lincoln. As noted, any type of walkway would be greatly appreciated, but seeing that the asphalt option is cheaper along with giving a wider area for pedestrians to travel, it seems like the best option. Go ahead, Sherry. Thank you. A um, couple things. One it relates to Dennis's um, question. If it was a business that was going there, would we require them or a resident to put concrete in? I believe that that's what we should do if that's what our code states. 
Um, the second thing is, um, yes, I don't know, I, I remember it was a long, long time ago, but why that sidewalk, I always remember why it went from the corner right to the school, why there wasn't a sidewalk in front of the school. And I know there was a reason why, but I don't remember why. But um, I was just surprised to hear in there that um, there wasn't money to complete it. I mean, we had referendum money, and the quadplex had tons of money. I mean, if this is only 70000 that's that's change. Um, but for whatever reason, you guys didn't get it done. But um, I'm in agreement with it. But like Mr. Eichstead said, if it was a special assessment, it should be billed as a special assessment. If it was a business that was there, the bit, we wouldn't be paying for it. I mean, we would special assess the business as well because it's a new development. So I'm in favor of it, but... Um, I believe that it should be a special assessment or they pay us directly you know however they work that out but it would be no different if a business was there that's just that's my view thank you mr. Bemke care to speak on this issue being your referral I just have a couple things first of all I've had over the last couple of years a handful of um, people have approached and asking why um, I think with the changes at the school now, and I think the biggest change that I've noticed in the neighborhood is when the freshmen move to the high school, there's a lot more pedestrian traffic now, and there's a lot of people that walk in the evenings and stuff. So uh, there is some interest, and I, I do agree there is a need there, I guess, how we fund it and what you end up using. I guess we could base that off of the recommendation of the engineering department. Thank you. As far as concrete or asphalt is concerned, being that you know the existing bike trail that, that's that's east west, you know along um, W and, and 54, there is asphalt currently, um, and you kind of get a little bit more bang for your buck as far as with. Um, I wouldn't have an issue with asphalt in this particular location, um, but I do agree with with Sherry's assessment that this is a project that should you know, should be specially assessed or paid directly um, by, 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 you know, obviously the school district being that it's, it's their property, so. Are there any other questions or comments? Sherry? Thank you. I just have one quick question. If we went through asphalt because the, the bike trail, like you're saying, is asphalt, but the, the diagonal sidewalk that, that would be removed, I don't know, but that's concrete. Um, and if we're going in front of the school, there's the one parking area where the buses used to go, and then there's grass, and then there's the other entryway, and then nothing, and then another entryway, and then the sidewalk is concrete. Is that correct? So just to make it look better, I mean, would it make more sense to have concrete? And I just kind of go off of that. Yes, it's cheaper, but to me it would just look more uniform and if that's what would require another business to use I would recommend concrete that's my only other comment thank you go ahead Tom hey, I now somewhat echo I guess what uh, Sherry's just saying because I uh, I guess if it, if it would be asphalt and I think you know uh, there have to be some stipulation I think said that if this was to happen somewhere else, that'd be concrete, because otherwise, you there'll be people wanting to. You did it here with asphalt. Why can't we? Um, so I would. What you decide to do, I guess, is up to you. But uh, uh, maybe it could be part of the bike trail if that was to be asphalt or something. So, but uh, but again, with what Sherry said, it'd be u more uniform. Would be concrete too. So whatever you decide. Dennis. Uh, th <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would just soon go with the concrete myself, too, on it, just simply because uh, I, re I realize there's a difference in price, but I would rather go with the concrete than have it being uniform with the rest of the code in the city. <laughs> and. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think something should be done in there, but I, I would rather see with the concrete. Go ahead, Joe. Um, just, just a final comment um, on the, the concrete versus asphalt. 
so with with the concrete and a special assessment scenario um, it would have to be a five foot concrete sidewalk couldn't be a we couldn't special assess for a four foot or an eight foot or a, you know a width that's comparable to an asphalt trail and so regardless of the price I guess the position that that we were looking at is will we get if we allow the asphalt albeit it is cheaper and it is a deviation from standard sidewalk the community benefits from the um, the additional width that's provided uh, to those uh, adjacent land uses further to the south um, certainly it doesn't connect uh, at a eight or ten foot width that that whole distance at this time but you know could in the future but that was the the premise that we wouldn't be able to assess for a, an eight or ten foot sidewalk concrete sidewalk I have a question is the sidewalk do you know there's a sidewalk down in front of the hockey rink is is that a five foot sidewalk that's wider isn't it I'm not sure offhand um, Paul's looking it up on the map. Joe, while Paul's looking that up, so could you reiterate what you said? So if it's anything greater than five foot, then we can't special assess for it? Is that what you said? Well, I think technically the city probably could, but I guess under the premise of of what others are required to have to put in others would put in a standard five-foot sidewalk section made of concrete and so yeah I guess the city could still still do a special assessment project and do something more unique but under the premise that well why would we do asphalt if everybody else is doing concrete um, I guess it, it falls into that scenario What do you got, Paul? So using the City Viewer website, the sidewalk, <coughs> excuse me, in front, starting at the uh, south driveway entrance in front of the pack, going all the way down to Grove Street is seven foot wide. I mean, there's some shadowing, so it might be off a little bit, but it's pretty consistent to that width. Which makes sense. Eric typically plows that with a pickup truck or or something so um so Joe if we went seven foot again if we went seven foot so it merges with the existing sidewalk to the south we could do such special assessment with that is that what you're saying Te technically the city does have authority to to levy special assessments in that regard yeah the the um, it does differ from our our standard which is our five-foot sidewalk but the city could still do that so to be consistent if a if it was a business that was there and they wanted to put a 10-foot wide path there I mean there might be some resistance for that because it's it's not code per se or so are you asking if the if the business would want a wider path yeah there? Um, so I guess as long as that that request coincides with with the city's either existing infrastructure or future plans you know if, if the city has 
plans or sees benefit for a wider, a wider path, a wider sidewalk, um, to either match into existing or, or future plans or future needs, then yeah, the city could allow that property owner to put in a wider, wider sidewalk. Okay. Um, I guess I would make a motion to approve the sidewalk um, concrete and either five or seven foot, depending on what you would recommend as a special assessment. Would we need a motion for that? That'd be basically taking no action. Is that correct? You're asking for this project to be added to the CIP. That that would be our request. I mean, we. I guess I haven't I haven't reviewed um, trying to add this project into this year's uh, schedule. Um, so that was the the request to get it into the CIP so that we could possibly add it, you know, for next year or or whenever the the council would like to see it included in the CIP. But um, But yeah, regarding the motion though, what was what was your motion? I was just going to approve the sidewalk construction as the request is um, with concrete and it be billed as a special assessment. And either five or seven foot, you know, depending. If the seven foot is what's existing, I would think that that would be fine. I mean, 10 foot's pretty, I mean, I know there's traffic, I go by there quite a bit too, but I mean, 10 foot to me seems a little excessive, but um, depending on, I guess, I don't know who would decide the five or the seven, but. Okay. Go ahead, Jay. Um, Paul, if you still have your thing up, the bike trail is asphalt already, correct, and how wide is it at? Say again, at 12? Uh, from that's concrete that s south of 16th, but as you go as you go or uh, as you go east of 16th, that's asphalt, correct? Correct. And do you know how wide that is? Uh, give me a second. So I may be off here on those measurements a little bit because it's my eyes are bad enough where I got to zoom in enough and I might be off, but. I believe it's a 10 foot trail, but I'm there now, so one second. Wow. It's coming up as eight and a half on from 16th to County Trunk W. Probably a nine foot trail then. I guess the only thing is, is we're tying this into a bike trail that's asphalt already and I understand the concerns about the concrete and the way everybody else is treated, but this is being tied into a, into a bike trail that I think we could consider this part of that trail. Which I think it leaves asphalt as an option for us. <coughs> Go ahead, Sherry. But, I mean, I get what you're saying, Jay, because that path goes there. But, I mean, if we're considering a bike trail that goes in front of the high school, it, it, it just it goes to the high school, and then it goes to airport and then there's not even any sidewalk anymore. So it's not going anywhere to another trail, per se.
Okay, no, I haven't been involved in that in particular, but there's a, a bike friendly communities thing through the community development that maybe they're tied together somehow. Go ahead, Jay. So in that section, we've got designated bike lanes on 16th Street, and that's created problems with parking down there. If the sidewalk or, or bike trail, call it what you will, were to go through, could those bike lanes on 16th Street be eliminated? Yeah, they, they could be eliminated. I mean, I guess they, they could be eliminated regardless if there's, you know, a wider sidewalk on the east side as well, but... Um, I guess it all depends on where people are, what's being utilized or most utilized and where we find the best benefit. Yeah. Thank you. Jerry? Joe, those bike lanes aren't true dedicated bike lanes anyways, correct? Um, that, I think that at Yeah, they, they are they are actual bike lanes. They're not the the share of the road. Okay. I guess so. If I made a motion, Joe, are you? Do we need that? Or I mean, because your requ the request simply states um, to consider a sidewalk on the east side of Sixteenth Street. So that would just is that all you would need? for now to move forward to get it in the CIP? Um, I think, it, so, um, I mean, it's at the discretion of the, the committee and, and the council, um, you know, as little or as much as you want a motion. Um, it can, a motion can differ from, from the, the requests that we're asking for, um, certainly, but um, I guess to get it moving, it, if there's a desire to have it happen this summer, um, I would ask that, you know, we bring it back and give us time to review the schedule and see what, if that's even possible. Um, otherwise, yeah, we could pr uh, proceed with a motion to incorporate it into the CIP, which we would then bring back to the committee um, sometime this spring or early summer with the rest of the CIP um, updates for the next the next five-year cycle here to review against all the other projects and see where you want to position things or move things up or push things back and so I guess I would I would I don't know I just I guess I just keep my motion that um, we would approve it um, I mean if we could get it in this summer if, if there's there's time I mean, I know there's, depending on what we're going to push back that, that was already in your CIP that we're supposed to get done this year. Um, but I would still like to keep it as a special assessment because it's no different than if it was a business that was coming in, we wouldn't just pay for it ourselves in either. So um, as far as the concrete asphalt, um, like I reiterated, it would be no different if it was um, somebody, their business coming in, we would incorporate that as, as, as concrete. Um, so I guess I would just keep my motion the same. You could still, you could still do that. Um, would you still anticipate doing it this calendar year or, or next or? Okay. Yeah, so I mean, if, if the property owner chooses to do it in advance of when the city would do it, you know, then, you know, I think, you know, any, any motions and considerations would be, um, I mean, the project would get taken care of it just in a different means. So we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second?
Go ahead, Dennis. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, did I hear you right then that, that you were considering it doing it or the school district would be putting it in? Okay. At this point, I, I think I would be in favor of that than they go with the problems that we're having trying to figure out what to do here. I think, I think it's, we know, we, we're talking about cement. That's, that's about the only thing that we're probably consistent on here, but, um, What was what was proposed originally, and when this was part of the the scope of the current activities at the school? Okay. Okay, well, I would say that motion dies uh, uh, due to lack of support. And realistically, is there any action needed with, with the school's motivation to perform this project? There, there wouldn't be, I guess, if, if the school is um, able financially and fit it into their schedule then ahead of the cities then that would be that would be fine okay and then as far as material and width would that decision need to be made right now or prior to them installing if if there's anything specific that the committee would like to see I guess that could that motion could be made otherwise it'll just be through a, a permit to the engineering department and then we'd work with them <coughs> directly on the width and in, in material if, if there isn't anything specific from the committee. Okay. I would make a motion to, as far as material is concerned, to either match the existing sidewalk width in front of the PAC um, going along 16th there, the airport, or uh, alternate use of asphalt. Could you repeat that? So my motion is um, to allow either uh, concrete at the width of the existing sidewalk and or um, asphalt at the, at the wider width uh, matching the bike trail. I second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? And how is it being financed? Sounds like the school's taking care of it. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to vote. All in favor, respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. All right, item seven, review the Wisconsin Rapids Rail Feasibility Study. Joe? So I, I included it on, on the agenda just in case there was any interest in having some preliminary discussions um, at this time. Otherwise, I know that there was a uh, committee of the whole scheduled for Thursday evening as well. So we can we could do as little or as much as you'd like. Uh, why don't you give us a high level? Okay. So uh, Patrick Engineering, uh, in conjunction with Link Things, they they have submitted their uh, report. Um, to the city, uh, we've reviewed it internally. And of course, we've, we've shared it with, with the council and, and the public as well. Um, and um, overall, the, the report looks to be, um, you know, for, for this preliminary standpoint, you know, where we're at with looking at things, um, it does seem to provide uh, some of the basics, at least, that hopefully the, the 
the city can utilize here to at least some <laughs> some preliminary dis decisions or uh, po get pointed in a in a direction that they'd like to pursue. Um, Patrick Engineering did a variety of uh, data gathering um, at various rail crossings in the city. Uh, they have a picture in there that kind of shows their, their little trailer that they used with the equipment on there to kind of see how many trains, how fast they were moving, what direction they were headed, um, how long they were, uh, those sorts of things. So we've got a lot of uh, characteristics about the rail traffic. Um, some of the things that um, kind of highlights there, the, the crossing with the biggest impact, which I, I think was somewhat intuitive, um, even prior to gathering any data, but it confirmed with the data was that West Grand Avenue crossing um, has the biggest impact uh, with annual, average annual daily traffic volume of almost 12,000 vehicles every day. Um, the crossings on average, they get blocked about eight minutes uh, each time on average, uh, but they can, of course, be blocked up to an hour um, at, at times anyway. Um, additionally, uh, one of the things that I found interesting was that they, they noted that um, the crossings at Gaynor Avenue and Grand Avenue are blocked simultaneous only 0.1% of the time, so, so almost never. Um, the hard part is, is that if you're, if you're a traveling in a vehicle, you have no idea that where that, the rest, where that train actually ends, if it extends beyond another crossing, um, or how long it, it's been since, um, you know, that, that train's been progressing through the area, and by the time you realize that, well, hey, this crossing's blocked, what about that other crossing, you know, further, further downstream or upstream of where I'm headed? Um, and then additionally, uh, with the rail yard location just north of Grand Avenue, uh, most of the, de the delays that are uh, measured, you know, especially the ones that, um, you know, eight minutes and above, it's, it's largely due to the uh, switching operations uh, with the rail yard. So the, the through trains as they come through town, you know, they're, they're moving at a semi-reasonable clip through, through, through town compared to the switching traffic, which is moving even slower, and then they stop and wait as they switch cars and then start moving in the opposite direction again. Um, in addition to some of the data gathering uh, with the rail, they also uh, did a data gathering, you know, just with public survey, and um, there was a, a thousand plus survey responses that were submitted over that month or so that it was uh, active, and. Um, of course, the number one issue from the survey was the congestion or delays um, that with the assumptions that Patrick Engineering and Link Things put together uh, accumulate an, an impact cost to the community of roughly $5.5 .5 million per year. Um, the second ranking issue is the safety. Um, there's six to 12 emergency vehicles that are blocked on average every year um, coming from the uh, fire department information. Uh, in addition, 33 accidents involving rail cars over the past 10 years. And again, with some assumptions, they put together a, a impact cost to the community of about $2 million per year. And then the third, third ranking issue was the, the noise complaints. Um, so besides the, the data gathering, uh, alternatives were identified and the report does go through a extensive list of various options. Um, there are more options than what are listed there. Um, not that Patrick put together, but just, you know, from our internal review, um, there are different variations, um, scenarios, either combining different alternates or um, kind of expanding on ideas that were presented in the report, but um, they go from, uh, you know, basically just zero cost to all the way up to um, almost $38 million uh, with a grade separation type of project. Um, so it, it definitely spans a, a, wide, a wide range of options. Um, there's pros and cons with each of those options, of course. 
Um, the, certainly the, the recommendation that they're providing in the report is, I think, mainly based on if you, if you do, if, you, if the city agrees with that recommendation, it, it provides everything that the city needs. It, it provides a grade crossing at Grand Avenue, uh, quiet zone, as well as um, some of the uh, um, technology options with the predictive mobility. And I guess just, just to briefly touch on the predictive mobility option, um, it, it's uh, either a combination of um, you know, using your, your GPS device or your smartphone and roadside signage and at least being made aware that hey, the, the crossings are blocked up ahead, um, choose an alternate route or otherwise providing a, a, a different route directly on your smartphone, um, you know, if that's the device that you're using at the time. But um, so again, pros and cons with all of those, but um, I guess that's an initial high level review. Go ahead, Jerry. Sorry, thank you. Joe, one thing, I know the cost estimates are in there and that, but as far as the predictive mobility, I mean, I know we're going to talk about this more in a couple nights or a couple more days, but, you know, some questions I would have, um, you know, that seems like the most feasible, cheapest option type of thing, but we could use that with something else. But just concerned, you know, like with the cost of the software, the life expectancy of all the sensors, you know, how the updates, um, who maintains the sensors, um, you know, the cost of of the software and the, and the sensors and all that, um, you know, what that cost would be on top of the initial setup of all of that, you know, because that's very important if, it, you know, we have something and we're paying $300,000 a year to do, you know, that's, it'd be interesting to know what those kind of concepts are. So, I, I mean, I don't know if you could get that. I mean, I'm, I mean, we have time to talk about that, obviously, too, but those are just some of the things that I kind of thought of with that as an ongoing cost. So, thank you. Joe, could you touch on the, the quiet zone alternates? Um, looking at looking at say alternate 6-2 quiet zone option 2 improvement at Bono. So is this essentially identifying uh, you know a couple of intersections that need improvement but then you're also making improvements on all the intersections listed in, in, in that quiet zone run or it would be the valley sub run. Is that correct? The, um, the, the Whitehall sub, is that so the um, so they, they laid out a couple different scenarios where um, you know you're providing a quiet zone at a couple stretches. You know, six two is improvements at Bono Avenue. So I'm not sure. I'd have to double check in in the report here which crossings are all included in that particular uh, quiet zone. Um, but then six three improvements at Gainer, 17th Street South. Um, so a, a quiet zone has to be at least a half mile in length, and then all of the crossings have to have lights and gates and possibly other alternative or supplementary safety measures installed. Um, and so the, um, I believe 6-4 is essentially providing a quiet zone for, for all of the crossings um, on the west side there in that Whitehall sub. I think there was a map earlier in the report that kind of showed the, um, mm, I guess I'd have to review the, you're right, the, the Valley Sub is along Gainer Avenue, 17th Avenue, Chase Street, Grand, and where, where the distinction is with Whitehall Sub versus the Valley Sub. I guess the way I read it, there was, some improvements that need to be made to lower, what is the term here? To lower the QZRI. So yep. I, I don't know if they're referencing, you know, making those, those more major improvements to the called out intersection, and then obviously making 
um, further improvements along those those de designated crossings to get it up to to par, if you will. Um, but if you could if you could maybe look into that and bring that to the committee of the whole meeting to Certainly. clarify, that'd be great. Jerry, thank you. On top of that, Joe, I know we had kind of briefly discussed it. I know we we're kind of focusing on where the congestion issues are, which is the West Grand Avenue um, area over there. Um, but I know over where I live, on off of First Street, um, there's train traffic there as well um, with no arms, um, which is very loud. I mean, we can hear the horns all the way from there, but on First Street as well. And I don't believe that those made, that didn't make it in this report because because if we're going to do a quiet zone, I mean, it, like I, I know Tom and I had talked um, before that it would be nice to have it everywhere. I mean, if we're doing a quiet zone, not just over there, but over where we are too. But So they, they did not do any estimates as far as, um, you know, what the cost would be for the quiet zone. I do have estimates that we had done previously. Uh, we could update them based upon the the most recent unit costs that they're using in in the report here um, they did reference first street though in the report um, just noted noting that um, there were there was was a safety issue at that particular cross and there's there's more vehicle um, vehicle rail accidents there than i think at any of the other other grade crossings in town so that was a, a noteworthy item that they they did point out in the report. Thank you. And I think might, part of that might be the requirements of that half mile stretch um, of crossings, correct? Um, so that might be why, say, like a first street would be, wouldn't be included? Um, so, I mean, they didn't include, we didn't include first street specifically. Um, as part, we didn't include really anything on the east side specifically they they did pull in first street for some various data points that they were using to compare um, the west side crossings against um, in particular for the the technology and safety improvements but regarding the the quiet zone that's that's the hardest part with it is that um, uh, you know you have to have we have so many crossings that if you do it at on one stretch, you're still going to hear it on the, you know, another half mile down the track. You're still going to hear the horns going, but um, yeah, I guess pros and cons. And and on top of that, did they go down First Street down to Kingston? Is it Kingston and Twentieth? I believe you know because that would be a half, well over a half mile. I mean, yep. so it would be that. I mean, I know it goes underneath. Um, the viaduct there on 54 but I mean it does go I mean I know my grandma lived on a house I grew up with her and is very close to their houses there at that intersection as well so we just it'd be nice like Tom and I were talking before that uh, you know that everybody be included in it not just that if we're going down that direction but and I can pull that information together for Thursday and you know we can discuss it further then um, you know based on what we had presented prior years to the to the committee when this when the quiet zone uh, topic came up. We'll update those cost estimates and, and bring those in. One, sorry, one, one last thing. And unless I missed it, there were, I know the city has paid for at least one report in the past. Is that something that, um, that, is a, that, that we could have? I mean, yes. do you have that? I mean, um, it would be nice just for us just to review it and just kind of try to piece things together even though you know you're, you're you're the you're the expert on it but it would be I, I will share it um, I've actually got a paper copy here with me tonight and I did provide it with the information we sent to the consultant that did this report mm -hmm. um, and it was it was around the year 2000 early 2000s anyway um, and that's where they were st strongly considering with with the DOT the city and the railroad, uh, Wisconsin Central Limited at the time, um, relocating the rail outside of Rapids. And um, I guess conversations just with Paul this afternoon or earlier today that um, kind of the, the difficulty in pursuing that, although I think all the, there was definite uh, pros for the city 
uh, for the DOT and even the railroad, they found that um, they could reduce their insurance exposure, uh, reduce their insurance rates significantly with that rail relocation at the time anyway. But um, it, it largely fell through uh, because the relocation went through, um, it went through a township and um, ultimately the city, I think it was the city that decided against it uh, in the end. But um, there is a, uh, the, the railroad was serious about it. There is a federal uh, document with the Federal Register um, at the time that Wisconsin Central Limited uh, officially noticed um, the Federal Railroad Administration that this was their intent to relocate this, the section of track along West Grand Avenue, or at least their, their traffic. And um, yeah, so there's maybe 20 pages here, but I can definitely share that um, to all of you in an email. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, then we'll move on. Uh, item eight, review the concept drawings for Lincoln Street between East Riverview Expressway and East Grand Avenue proposed for reconstruction in 2024. Joe? Thank you. So this is, um, this project is a bit unique. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that um, at least take a few moments and kind of introduce, you know, some of the options and some of the initial concepts that we have going on with this with this particular project and, and just a general notice to the public um, that we're starting to look at this street um, for reconstruction and, um, you know, that we'll, we'll be posting a lot of the information out on the website so that if, if anybody's interested in in reviewing it and certainly um, you know we'd be soliciting feedback uh, from anybody that would like to like to provide it but um, I guess just a quick overview of of the corridor so the Lincoln Street project uh, proposed in 2024 um, would go from uh, East Riverview Expressway up to East Grand Avenue and so that existing right away through, especially through the area in front of um, the, the old East Junior High is, is significantly wider than what we would typically have to work with for a, a normal street right of way. And so uh, primarily what we'd be doing throughout the corridor is, is um, narrowing that uh, pavement footprint and um, continuing to provide lane designations, especially at Chestnut Street and, and maybe even Birch Street. Um, we're gonna be looking at Dewey Street in particular at the Quick Trip en entrance and reviewing the traffic control there and lane designations and just um, see how much traffic and turning movements that we have at that intersection and make sure that we have everything um, appropriate in a new, new project. Um, we are with the narrowing of the, the street, we are looking at um, providing a, um, a wider sidewalk slash rec trail connectivity. Um, it would tie in with the trail along the expressway and then um, eventually East, East Jackson Street's also in the, the five-year CIP that when that project's redone, it would actually provide continuity with what we just built on West Jackson, West Jackson Street uh, with the rec trail coming across the bridge, tie in with the trail system that runs on the East River Bank as well. And so there is, there's some opportunities here uh, with this project to do something like that. Um, certainly there's a lot of uses adjacent to and close by this Lincoln Street corridor. Obviously the, the, the ball diamond uh, the aquatic center, um, uh, the schools, and um, uh, of course the residential neighborhood that's there, um, the library, East Grand Avenue businesses, A Street businesses. That um, you know, it is a it is a corridor that a lot of people um, do utilize, uh, and um, you know, it could be a a decent corridor extension for pedestrians and bicyclists. 
Um, some additional things, you know, parking along Lincoln Street, and we're at least at this time looking to at least maintain what's, what's out there or enhance it if we can. Um, some, some light tree planting, urban tree planting, you know, put back some things that uh, with a reconstruction we always end up having to remove some trees to get the underground utilities in and, um, you know, likely consider replacement of, of trees and, and such in, in the appropriate locations. Um, you know, so the location of the, the, the recreational trail, it's currently shown on the west side uh, in the concept drawing. Um, that's still up for debate. I think there's still some, some benefit with having it on the east side except for south of Chestnut Street, there's some um, high voltage uh, power lines that, that run along the east side of Lincoln Street up to the expressway that kind of preclude our, our options there to, to fit a trail in that stretch on the east side of, of Lincoln. Um, otherwise, uh, in the referral document, we listed some, some of the feedback that we had uh, received so far, uh, mostly kind of internal department review, but um, you know, some things there that we're, we're still working through. But again, this is just, just meant to um, introduce the project uh, to the public and, um, you know, extend the offer for feedback, um, any feedback that uh, anybody would like to share. Sherry. Thank you. Um, love the design, but um, have, have quite a few issues with it. Um, I mean, when we're talking on the making the, the trail on the west side, which I totally understand, but holy man, how much, how much property are those property owners going to lose? Um, if we're talking, you know, on putting a 10-foot wreck trail, or are we talking that we could actually, I don't want to say move the street, but I mean, there's more accessible area by the rafters, you know, in, in the high school there to push the road back over this way. And if we wanted to put it, you know, the trail on the other side where property owners, on this map that I printed out, it doesn't look as bad. But when I looked online, it's like, wow, they could really use or lose a big chunk of their property. You know, it, some of those look like they're coming pretty close to their homes and then have a 10 foot wide trail with people walking right front by their front door. Maybe it's not that excessive, but I'd be kind of interest, interested in that. Where if we're gonna go down from a four lane to a two lane is what I believe you have in there. As far as keeping, keeping the amount of um, parking on there, but it'd be interesting to see if we could, you know, if, if that road could move back, if we're going to keep that trail on that west side. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, just for, just for um, clarification that at least um, the, the, the trail that would be put in there, any sidewalk would, would be put in, back in the existing right-of-way. Um, the only area that we're we might have some right-of-way needs would be south of Chestnut Street. Um, there is, appears to be some discrepancy with the parcel mapping that we have um, for those properties south of Chestnut Street on the west side of Lincoln Street. Um, uh, it shows that we have an additional five feet of space there, but um, all the research that we've done, um, legal descriptions and such, and finding property pins suggest that that five feet is not mapped correctly. So that's that's kind of an, a different issue. But the the um, the trail that you're referring to, um, especially in front of the the school, all of that is would be put back in the existing right of way. So they nobody would be losing losing property there. Are you talking? Because when I was looking online, um, where Witter Street is, the house is right to the right of that. It looks like, I mean, it looks like it's going right a lot closer to their homes than what it is because you're adding that 20-foot boulevard. Yeah, so it, it is a bit confusing, but it, um, 
the um, you know just looking at the the picture here that that trail because the roads narrowing up that the trail is actually still within the city's right of way there it's actually right on top of the existing sidewalk so they're not going to lose like I said just from when I was looking at it it looked like they were gonna lose about 15 20 feet of their yard but it, it's not nope okay and then if we the 20 foot boulevard there and the right side of Witter, because we're going from a four lane to a two lane. I mean, I know that's a little bit off, but I mean, is there more amp, more area to park or something like that? I mean, I know it does get congested in there with the, with the games and stuff, but that'd be something interesting as well. I mean, I don't know how, what do they call those roads where you kind of go off the main road and you know where there's parking on both sides and then you have their driveways where it's not if that makes sense yeah 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 so the parking is, is definitely something that we're we're still evaluating the goal is to maintain at least the parking that's out there if if not being able to increase the parking uh, that would be available for those those special events and, and games and such It's good. Um, like I said, I mean, with all the traffic being by the water park, you know, on, on this side of it with, with the rafters and the water park and, and all of that, it just seems like it'd make more sense on the other side. But that's my two cents. I know it's initial, so thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? As far as parking is concerned, uh, it's a little hard to see, but I see there's a, a possible proposed parking lot there uh, on the west side of the former East Junior High. Is that something that would be done in concert with this reconstruction, or that's no? Something? It wouldn't. It, it's more of just a, a possible um, possible change of use, I guess. If if there was ever a, a a sale or repurposing of that um, of these existing school property if that were to ever happen that you know perhaps there would be a uh, an impetus then to put in a parking lot to service that whatever that facility could be um, but no not part of not part of the road project in particular okay all right we'll move on to item nine Review the referral list. Are there any additions? Any corrections? I'd say everything on the list is still relevant that isn't crossed out. So we'll leave it as is. Item 10, set the next meeting date. <clears throat> what do we got here? Looks like uh, April 6th would be the first Thursday of the month. Um, I will be on vacation that week, so I would prefer to go to the 13th or earlier. What are committee's thoughts? Um, you're on the you're on vacation on the first week. Yeah, the first week of April. Is finance? Did you guys decide? Because I, Dean, you said you're going to be. On. Okay. Um, I don't think I have. I mean, I don't have any conflicts because the week you're off is election week. So mm -hmm. after the following week, I'm fine with whatever at five. Okay. Is council chambers available the 13th at five? Does that work with you, Dennis? April 13th? Uh, yeah, it, got, it looks all right on there. Um, I was looking at the 11th. Is that going to? Work for everybody, or 
the eleventh. Uh, that make any difference to me? We're yeah. five. We're signing up people at five o'clock. Okay. You got to sign up at five or four. I, I guess what I was thinking, if if uh, this meeting would be after the, the finance meeting, we'd have two meetings just like tonight. Would that be easier for you, anybody? I'm not opposed to that. I'm not either, just depending on what's going to be on it, because if we don't start till 6 o'clock, if, if you guys are, you know, sometimes you guys are later. Because if we don't start till 5, 5.30, and if we're talking about, you know, if, if, if this stuff comes back up, we could be here past 7. I, d I don't, but otherwise it doesn't matter to me. But I don't know how. We're, we're, in, we're fine. It would make a difference. I suggest it. Yeah, it, it don't matter to me. Okay. Well, let's stick with Thursday the 13th, 5 p.m. All right, item 11, adjournment. I'll move to adjourn. Second. Take a vote. All in favor? Aye. All right. Have a great evening, everyone.